All right. Salam to not. Tana is the link. We want to uh, continue this particular this particular um, teaching that we've been teaching on the LOJ hieroglyphically explained. The LOJ hieroglyphically explained. Really, it's going into the origin of the so-called English or Latin Latin base and English letters. That when we start to study the alphabet and we start to study the origins of the so-called English alphabet. Indubitably, we come to the ancient Kemet or the ancient Kemet, which is known as ancient Egypt, the native black Egyptian. And then coming from the root of the ancient Egyptian society, we trace it to ancient Tobia, what we call today Ethiopia or Ethiopia. So we're going to the origin of these particular letters. The L, you understand, for a lion. This O right here for the of, but also the order. And, and it's very central to understand this, this idea here. Even though as an acronym, some would say that the O should not be there in, in the acronym form. But we dispute that and we have it as LOJ. But to explain LOJ hieroglyphically or according to to the symbols, because the symbols are very important. And even in English, we can trace this to its ancient Egyptian and therefore to its ancient Ethiopic origins. So now we have the L, which stands for the flail. You understand the O, which stands for re. You understand re, or what some would call the ancient Egyptian um, sun god. Now that's very, that's very speculative. And even to a certain degree, that's very dubious as well, this, this characterization of the sun god, because along with it, there's a lot of misunderstanding and misinterpretation. Even the pronunciation of the name, when they say, uh, they say ra, ra, ra. Now, in the Hebrew, to say uh, ra, uh, ra, actually means evil, while to say re, or re, re, Re or re is, is to say to vision or to see, to see in the sense of to see in the visionary sense, because coming from the ancient origins in the Ethiopic, and we have the word arai, arai, which means to see, but in the sense of the vision, to see the vision, and we're referring to the vision of God in Christ. So there's a understanding that needs to be understood that sometimes you'll see re or the so-called Egyptian sun god that they'll mispronounce as Ra with a R-A. Sometimes that's a little, a little um, academian and scholastic and bibliolater pun. You understand to basically say, quote, evil, the mispronunciation. While other um, works you'll see some would write it as R-E or they might write as R-A, two dots over the A or R-E with some sort of phonetic um, system employed there. Now, just give me a moment and we'll get into this a little further. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, some of this is going to come off the board. So, hopefully, this is a, a, a continuation of the last um, lecture on this. We want to continue what we have broken down here and we're going to review for a moment. Now, all this is linked with Ras Teferi, as you can see over here. All this is linked with Ras Teferi and Rosh Teferet. Because this symbol also for the Re refers Kabbalistically to the Sifarot that's known as Teferet. And Teferet and Tefari linguistically, etymologically, are related from one and the same root. So when we go to the Hebraic origins of Ras and Tafari, or Rosh and Tiferet, it's very important to see this interpretation and to see how the two, you understand, how the two um, relate and refer to the same, the one and the same teaching. So, now what we're going to do is we're looking at the we're looking at the the L when we spin it around and rightly shape it hieroglyphically. We see the flail, 
the flail, or what some call the cat of nine, the cat of nine tails. Then we have the J over here, and the J is the shepherd's rod, or what's known as the crook. Now, the meaning of these are very important, too, because the flail is a symbol of, some say, punishment, but really the real idea is self or ras, discipline. And now ras or self also in the Ethiopic refers to the ras or the rosh, Hebraically speaking, to the rosh, Hebraically speaking. So when we look at these two, both L-O-J and interpretation hieroglyphically of Rastafari, there's much to be learned also in the practical sense. What we also broke down here briefly was um, yoga, this word for, 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 for yoga over there. And yoga in the English is yoke as we have it in the the Gospels. Let's, let's, let's bring up that scripture because the quote that His Imperial Majesty actually makes as well, and it's a good point of um, departure or coming out of Babylon. When we say a point of departure, we mean a point of coming out of one thing. We understand coming out by day, coming out by illumination, coming out by, by light and enlightenment. But not just the knowledge for the knowledge's sake, because for knowledge for knowledge's sake, one gets puffed up, but now for um, the applicative purposes, there's the application. This is where we're focusing our dissemination of the teaching is not just to have the knowledge of these things, but also to recognize the application and the benefits of such application. So when we go to Caduce uh, Mateos' Wengel, or the Gospel of St. Matthew, and we go to the part that is um, uh, sub subscribed as the new message of Jesus, the new message of Yeshua, the new message of Jesus, lelohu salam. Not the kingdom. It's not the kingdom at this point, but it's personal discipleship because they have rejected Yeshua, Yehoshua, as that king because they said they have no king but Kaiser or Caesar or Cesare Borgias. You understand? Cesare Borgia is none other than the so called white Jesus or the Antichrist or the idol shepherd or the, the beast, the symbol of that beast, the Antichrist, the false Christ, which much of the world still believes to be the Christ. And they still have these pictures up there and they still worship these images and idols. But moreover, in their mind's eye, they reject themselves, so they don't have a knowledge of themselves. And this is particularly pernicious um, to black people and to African people, although other peoples, it, it is damaging to them as well. And that contributes to what we know as this um, dis-ease of, of racism and, and racial discrimination, not just because it discriminates against a group of people because of their their complexion, their parents, so forth and so on, and many lies and blasphemies against his people, but because it denies them the truth, plain and simple, it denies them the truth. So it's not just about discriminating against people to discriminate against people or whatnot, but it's the denial, the denial of, of, of the truth, of the half of the story that hasn't been told until now. So in this section here, which, which has three verses. It has three verses, right? These three verses. The first one says, Come to me, all ye, you all, that labor and are heavy laden, comma, and I will give you rest, period, full stop. The second verse says, Take my yoke, take my yoke, take my yoga, take my discipline, take my yoke, upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye you all shall find rest for your souls then the third verse now the third verse reads for my yoke my yoke is easy 
My yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, light, not in the sense of light or illumination, but light in the sense of not being heavy, not being a so-called burden. You understand? So the, the true teachings of God in Christ are not a burden. Studying Torah, you understand, studying the scriptures and learning to apply this is not a burden. You understand? But many still view it as a burden mentality because they have not submitted their wills. They have not self-recognized themselves. They have not, they're still living in a, a delusion, a, 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 unre, a, a unreality, you understand, of the real um, state of affairs, the real situation and condition. They don't understand or know the condition of their souls. So this is soul teaching. You understand? This is, we could say, black teaching because black people are known as soul people. You understand? But even black people, so-called soul people, as is evidence from all the evidence, have also lost their souls. You understand? So there's teaching also um, and document documentation from a variety of sources which, which reveal, show, demonstrate, and put forward the evidence of how and why this has happened. So that also should be referred to elsewhere. In fact, for us as the Beta Israel, there's a program, I think, um, 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 the, 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 are the Negroes, uh, the Hebrews, or the Hebrew, the true Negroes, some of those programs that we, we have from other sources are very good as, as basic um, um, knowledge of self. You understand, if one wants to be able to understand what do we mean that we as so-called enslaved Africans or descendants of enslaved Africans in the Americas and the Caribbean are the true lost sheep of the house of Israel, are the beta Israel. So, yoke. Returning to this word yoke. We just want to understand what we have up here, you understand, before we now take it to the next level of the teaching, you understand, but it's going to be continuing from this era right here. Now, the, now this verse, Zechariah, from Zechariah chapter 11, verse 7, is important to understand because it's one of the prophetic words that speaks of the the, the rod, you understand, the, the, the staves. They, it, it's called, and King James says, interprets it as staves. Other places, it may call it staffs or, or sticks. You understand, Bamarinya, we called it the better, the better. The better is like the scepter, the scepter. Now, these symbolize two scepters, the L and L-O-J, or Lion of Judah, and the J symbolize two scepters or two staffs. Now, if you look in ancient Egyptian um, um, archaeology and, and, and archival information and pictures and, and, and art and facts, I like to call them art and facts or artifacts, but really it's the art and facts of ancient Egypt, you will see these two symbols. You understand? The flail and the crook or the crook and the flail. You understand? You'll see these two, these two symbols. You understand? On a variety of um, monuments, um, in the hieroglyphs, you understand? And various pictures of the, Ethio of the Ethiopians that had become known as as Egyptians, because the origins of ancient Egypt, of this true Egypt. Now, another point needs to be distinguished here. When we talk about Egypt, some people look at Egypt in a monolithic way, like it's all one thing. That's a very old civilization. There's different periods of that civilization. So when we're speaking about certain particular times in Egypt, especially biblically, scripturally, we need to distinguish this, that we need to understand that when the Bible begins in Egypt. You understand? It is beginning in Egypt of the latter days, latter day Egypt. Because some confuse that, many confuse that in fact. It's not speaking of Egypt of the earlier times. You understand? And when you now look at a lot of the of the artifacts that are found on ancient Egypt and a lot of the documentation, it's a far older period. So what's happened with Egyptology and archaeology and all the study and research that is made by mostly Europeans, that they have um, confounded various um, dispensations, various dynasties, 
and they've also avoided the different religious movements. There were different religious movements in ancient Egypt. And why we focus on this, because some would say, well, well, okay, that's important, but it's about what's going on now. But if you don't understand the past, you're not going to be able to comprehend nor understand the present. And, 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 and the future is not just a mystery, but it's a fear. A lot of people have fear of the future. You know, they have fear of change. You know, and even though their present situation and circumstance is not the best that it can be, and they even would admit that they would want it to be much better than it is, but they are afraid of, of change. And that's largely due to ignorance and the fear and the phobia and the misunderstanding that they have been given to be the true standing. You understand? So they don't even really have a good understanding, much less a standing or overstanding. So going over this is to, first of all, just address the basic background and the context that the rest of this teaching is going to reference to. So these symbols of the flail and the symbol of the crook are even found in the Bible. And this is one of the reasons why we quoted that particular area, and there's a couple of other areas that we can quote to also show that these are not just so-called, quote, Egyptian symbols, but these are symbols of civilization coming out of the ancient Ethiopic, you understand, the ancient Ethiopic civilization through the Egypt, and from Egypt is spread to many different cultures, east and west and also in Africa. So when we have an ability to discern this, then we can really understand and comprehend the true context of a lot of the information that we are receiving from various different um, sources and resources to put it into context. This is one of our main mantras in teaching. You understand? We have to put these matters into context because if we don't put them into context, we're only left with nonsense. You understand? And having this nonsense really does not benefit us. We, we get puffed up on knowledge. We, we know this. We know that. Because a lot of black folks and black people today have a lot of knowledge, you understand, about different things, you know, related to past history. But they haven't brought it together. There's not a unified field interpretation of all these various knowledges, how it all works together, just like all of these things are found referencing to the earth. These happen in the earth, happen in this circle or this cipher, you understand? But they don't understand. So what happens is they become divided and conquered about the truth. And the only one that wins in that situation is our adversary, is evil, is the antichrist, is death, is 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 the devil, you understand? But his rulership, you understand, has already ended for those who truly are in Christ. But even being in Christ, one has to grow. You understand? One has to grow up to him. And this is all biblical language, biblical references, study and show thyself approved, and work out your salvation, which shows that, yes, you are saved by grace. That means you are in a... A, a, an, an area, a purification zone, let's call it, a probationary zone of grace. You know what I'm saying? But just staying in that zone and just relying on grace and not doing the self-work that ones need to do, you know what I'm saying, causes them to fall from grace. And this is the very same thing that the ancients speak about with Diablos or Satan, otherwise known as the devil. He has fallen from grace. You understand? And therefore, he wants the same thing that happened to him. You understand? Well, he, she, and they, actually, that happened to them to happen to humanity. And there's also the, the reasons for that that are important. And I just reference you to the Kibber and the Guest, the Kibber and the Guest, when it spoke about how the angels how the angels um, fell from heaven, how they came down, how they did not bow to Adam, so forth and so on. And that basic um, subplot is found in Judaism, is found in Islam, it's also found in other religions and other spiritualities and religious uh, denominations of different, of different kinds, of different cultures. So it's important just to make that reference there. So... We've touched on this, we touched on this briefly now. Just going over this again, we have Ras Tafari. This is the revelation. This is the, rev this is the present revelation in this present time. So we're speaking about 
the oldest Judaism, one of the oldest. When we say Judaism is the oldest, Judaism was known in ancient Egypt. I know this will surprise a lot of folks. They'll say, no, it comes from Judah. Well, if Judaism comes from Judah, why do so-called Jews say that Abraham was a Jew? Or was a Jew? Was a Judahite. He practiced Judaism. And why, you know what I mean? That doesn't really make too much sense like that. You understand? Why did he go to Egypt? What was the link with Egypt and everything? You understand? And we're not told those things correctly because they're trying to avoid basically the racial Initially, the racial connection. Now, after we get through the racial part, after we take a deep breath, okay, they're black. You know, the Hebrews are black. You know, once we, once we get over that part, then we really start to get into the real study and the application. Most folks just get caught up on that whole racial part of the issue, and that's another trick of the devil, too. You understand? Even a lot of us have been being tricked to continuously go over all the same evidence that Jesus and the, and the Hebrews and the people of the Bible was black, was black, was black. But that is a part of a phobia. That's a phobia that Christ helps to lift from us. You know what I'm saying? The true Christ in his kingly character helps to lift that from us. You understand? As well as this um, hate that hate produced. And I've, I've, I've mentioned this before because it's very important. It's one thing that it's really stopping our progress right now. 